Well, you're most welcome to this video talk. It's actually Monday morning, the 10th of January. Now, there's been a lot of alarm, a lot of alarm communicated to me. Sometimes alarm, sometimes curiosity, but about this Delta Cron variant, so-called Delta Cron variant, which is a nickname. Now, it is quite possible when someone's infected with two variants, for example, Delta and Omicron at the same time, that both of these virus variants could get into a single cell and their genetics could be mixed up and you could have a new viral form produced. That could happen. That is possible. And some scientists in Cyprus are saying that's happening. They've called it Delta Cron. They're saying it's been found more in hospitalised patients. So the intimation there is it's more pathogenic, that it's making people sicker. And of course, if it's Omicron, it's going to spread all around the world. So is there going to be a, a terrible pandemic spreading all around the world of a highly contagious and yet still highly pathogenic variant? Uh, well, if you haven't got time to watch this video in detail, the answer is no, there's not. Um, I'm convinced there's not. There is a bit of argument around that, but my view at the moment is there's no evidence for this. So if you haven't got time to watch, then fine, just w watch the rest after work or something. Um, but le le let's look at that now. So uh, Delta Cron is the question mark. Now, of course, names are given by the World Health Organization in their wisdom. So this would just be a, a nickname that's been sort of uh, tagged onto that for the time being. Now, this only comes from Cyprus, as far as we know. Uh, it, we don't believe it is a new form of coronavirus. I don't think it is. Now, recombination events can occur, as we've said, inside a single cell. Now, this 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 has happened before. There is there is precedent for this. So, a person can be infected with two forms of the coronavirus, and you can get a hybrid form. That this has happened. But they've never really taken off. They've always been sort of more or less curiosities. Maybe a few tens of cases have been identified bit by genomic sequencing, then it's died out. So, for example, when Delta was replacing Alpha, we didn't we didn't have a combination of Alpha and Delta. Or indeed, when Alpha was replacing the B11 original Wuhan strain, again, we didn't have a recombination there. So I don't think there's any particular strong reason now why, should, why we should have a combination of Delta and uh, Omicron. Although we do have the two coexisting at the moment, so it is possible, but it doesn't seem to have happened is, is, the, is the bottom line at the moment. Looks like this might be lab contamination. That's the most likely outcome. Now, this comes from Professor Leodis uh, Kost Kostrikus, a professor of biological sciences, University of Cyprus, head of the Laboratory of uh, biotechnology and molecular virology so basically it sounds like this is the big cheese in cyprus suggested delta and omicron variants had amalgamated uh, we don't think so actually uh, there are currently omicron and delta co-infections and we found this strain that is a combination of these two the professor claims uh, and more people with it were found in hospitalized patients indicating it might be more pathogenic, which was a bit, which, which is what's concerned a lot of you. Uh, 25 of these sequence, sequences have been submitted to this grouping here, GIS, GISAID, which is the, um, it's like an international body that, uh, where, where people lodge all of the uh, genomic sequences that have been uh, put forward. So it's been lodged there as, as a, like an official genomic sequence, but is it? Dr. Thomas Peacock for London, Infectious Diseases. Uh, November, uh, there was a very small cluster of cases in November that uh, Dr. Peacock said had a really awful spike mutation profile and it turned out to be Omicron. So this guy's got a pretty good <laughs> track record. First in the UK to identify the, in fact, I think in the world to identify the, uh, well, the first genomically sequenced in South Africa, of course, but he's the first that seems to have decoded this along with South African scientists. Uh, and he was right, it's Omicron. <clears throat> but as we know, it's turning out not as bad as we thought, or m not as bad as many had feared. So Delta Cron genetic profile, uh, he says, Dr. Peacock says, looks quite clearly contamination. So quite clearly he thinks it's contamination. And as we've said, this is a guy with a bit of a good track record. Uh, several colleagues, in other words, he's asked, he's asked around his mates at Imperial College by the sound of it, probably other institutions, uh, almost definitely contamination, they agree. So uh, we are at an early stage. Uh, doesn't look like a real combination is the consensus of opinion from Dr. Peacock and his, uh, and his colleagues. Dr. Simon Clark, uh, University of Reading. It's perfectly possible for different versions of the virus to, that cause COVID-19 to combine sections of their genetic material. So this can happen. 
when people when because uh, of course you know when 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 Omic- when Delta is on the way out and Omicron's on the way in. You're going to get both viruses around for a period of time. Although that period didn't last long with Omicron because the, the, the Omicron has so outcompeted the Delta that uh, in the UK, Delta's probably down to about 3 or 4% of cases now. So there's not a lot of these around, but it's still quite possible. It is theoretically possible. So that would create a recombinant, he correctly says. It's quite possible. And indeed, it has happened before. Which is a genetic mosaic of different variants, it's possible, with altered characteristics. So it can, a reshuffling of the cards can give you a different hand. But they contain a number of uh, telltale signs and uh, Delta Cron just doesn't have any. So it just doesn't have the signs that would indicate that has happened. Instead, its proposed genetic code looks more like what would happen if you contaminated one sample with another. It looks like it's this simple. That could have happened at any point between sampling and sequencing in the laboratory. And I strongly suspect this is what happened. New variants will continue to come along, but I don't think this is one. So that looks likely. Delta Cron's genetic code. Uh, the also, the also, he also says, uh, scars of a notoriously faulty primer. So this is, this is kind of a known technique called V372 Amplicron, which is one of the agents used in it. And it looks like this has damaged the Delta and caused this, uh, caused this mix up with some Omicron sample. As of Monday morning, I've just checked it out. Uh, as of Monday morning, the United Kingdom Health Security Agency No new variants are under surveillance. And that was of about 20 past 10 English time, British time, uh, Monday morning. Now, Professor uh, Kostrikas doesn't quite accept this. Indication, indicate an evolutionary pressure on an ancestral form to acquire these mutations and not a result of a single recombinant event. Well, yes, but we don't think it is a single recombinant event. We, We think it's contamination, Professor. So... Looks like that's probably not a valid point. And he, this was in an email from the professor yesterday in response to the uh, the um, words from the British scientist. Delta Cron infection is, is higher amongst hospital patients for COVID-19 than amongst non-hospital patients. Yes, but how many? Is, is, it, is it 25 to uh, zero? So 25 were found in hospital patients, zero were found in community patients, or is it? What is it? Is, is, is it 20 to 5? We, we, we have no idea. It, 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 we just know it's a majority. So, you know, it doesn't tell us anything. And even, even so, it, you know, suppose it was something, suppose it was like 15 there and 10 there. Then with that size of sample, that wouldn't be statistically significant anyway. So I don't think that's really a valid point unless we're giving further data. Uh, so that rules out the contamination hypothesis. The professor, professor says, well, the, the, the majority of virological opinion disagrees with Professor Kostrikas at this point. The samples were processed in multiple sequencing procedures in more than one country. Now, this is a very powerful argument Professor Kostrikas puts forward here. If this result is duplicated in different labs using different techniques, then it would be more of a concern. And he's saying that's happened, but we don't have any details on that. So um, we can't comment further. He said at least one sequence from uh, Israel deposited in a at least one sequence from Israel deposited in a global database exhibits genetic characteristics of uh, Delta Cron. So he's saying that this is a sample that presumably has got to his lab from Israel. Um, but again, if it's gone through his procedures, then it's just as likely to be a, a mistake. There's something going wrong in that particular lab. So he does say there, this has been repeated in other countries. Um, If that's the case, we await further detail on that. Very interested to see what the Danish scientists are going to say on this, because, of course, we know that they're world leaders in um, genomic sequencing. But I think the overwhelming balance of opinion and the overwhelming balance of likelihood based on the precedents we've had in the last two years now, really, getting on for two years this month, of this pandemic but they've been learning about it it indicates that this is indeed just a contamination event and there's no such thing as delta cron therefore i am not remotely concerned about it at the moment we'll give the last word to professor nick loman uh, microbial genomics professor university of birmingham Uh, while a recombination form of delta nomicron would not be a complete surprise the finding from cyprus is more likely a technical artifact 
that arose in the process of sequencing the viral genome. So there you go. It looks like the balance of opinion at the moment is Deltacron is non-existent. There is no new variant which is found in hospital patients, therefore seems to be making people sicker, yet is as potentially as transmissible as Omicron. It does not seem to exist. If it does, if there's evidence otherwise, um, I will be uh, on it as soon as I can. It's a pretty important uh, potential development in the pandemic, but I think there's no story there and I'm not worried and I don't think Deltacron exists at the moment. Of course, we will correct it uh, as soon as we can if we find out anything else. But at the moment, I'm going to forget about it. Thank you for watching.